All right, hi everyone, I'm Varane. I'm based out of Mountain View, and I'm excited to visit all of you here in New York. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about mapping the brain. So, you know, the background here is that achieving a scientific understanding of the brain has proven difficult. Um, you know, neuroscience has been working on this for decades, and we have made some progress in some areas, but, you know, when we think about really fundamental questions, we still struggle uh, to scientifically answer them. So, for example, you know, how are memories stored and retrieved? How do we recognize a face? Why do we need so much sleep? Uh, you know, what goes wrong with brain, in brain diseases like Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, um, or other conditions? And so, uh, one of the reasons we don't have answers to those types of questions is that we don't really have all the data about the brain that we like in order to study it. So, for example, there's just 20 times more cells in your brain than there are people on Earth. Um, and, you know, one of the major hypotheses in neuroscience is that it's the network of connections formed between those 160 million cells, 160 billion cells, sorry, that enables you to process information, remember, plan, feel emotions, to be human. So by creating a map of all of those connections, what we call a connectome, uh, we hope to you know, provide new abilities to unlock understanding about how our brains work and why sometimes they don't. So mapping the connectome is one of the grand challenges in science and one that Google Research is uniquely well-suited to tackle. Google has a long history of mapping things, so search was all about mapping the web. Maps, of course, was about mapping the Earth. Now we're using our suite of advances in computer science and software to make a map of the brain. And we're very lucky to have an amazing set of collaborators from other institutions to share this mission. By working together, we've created new open access tools and data sets that have transformed how neuroscientists do research. One of the main efforts we've pursued at Google Research has been a map of the fly brain. So the fruit fly is a tiny organism, but important for biology research. Six Nobel Prizes have actually been won for biology research conducted in the fruit fly. Our collaborators at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute collected electron microscopy images of slices of the fly brain which we then developed to, uh, to reconstruct in 3D. The impact has been immense. Hundreds of papers have used this fly connectome to achieve advances in neuroscience and do things like describe how a fly can see, how they can navigate an environment, uh, how they can associate particular experiences with either good or bad sorts of associations, primitive forms of memory. For the first time in neuroscience, we can say this is the specific circuit that the brain is using to organize itself to accomplish a behavior that's important for the animal. These advances in connectomics have changed the field so significantly that neuroscientist Larry Abbott here at Columbia talks about the history of neuroscience as BC versus AC, before connectome versus after connectome. But we don't just work on flies. In 2021, we released the connectome from a tiny piece of human brain, about one third the size of a grain of rice, in collaboration with a lab from Harvard University. This video shows just the raw data of this human brain sample starting from a single connection and then zooming out by a factor of 1,000 until you see a field of view encompassing millimeters. Even though this was a small piece of human brain, about one millionth of it, it generated over 2,000 terabytes of raw imaging data. The tissue was obtained from a 43-year-old woman as a byproduct of medically necessary surgery who agreed to donate part of her brain to scientific research. After imaging all this tissue, the AI reconstructed the neurons and synapses using custom, al custom algorithms we developed, and we then analyzed the tissue for interesting features. So in addition to the thousands of connections um, and cells that we found, uh, we also came across new structures which had never been seen before. Not just new cell types, but entirely new things. For example, we found wires like this that wrap themselves into giant knots. They loop around themselves and make these big bundle knots, and we have no idea why this is. Nobody's ever seen it before. And that's sort of the beauty of science like this. We don't need to be biased about what to look for. The goal is to provide a data set in which it's all there, and in a large community of researchers can find and study things on their own. We made all of this data public and easy to navigate, uh, and you can check it out yourself. You can use the QR code or just Google browsable petascale reconstruction. We've also just launched uh, an important new project with collaborators and funding from the US National Institutes of Health. We're beginning to work towards a complete mammalian connectome, a mouse brain. The arc of progress here is a little bit like genomics, where the field started by tackling the smaller challenges of flies and worms, shown here in solid lines, and eventually the human genome, as we heard about earlier. But even then, it's taken decades to figure out how to turn that into important advances in medicine. But it has happened. If you look at things like mRNA vaccines or new approaches to cancer, these things all rely on a sophisticated understanding of genomes and molecular biology. Connectomics is in a much earlier phase of development, shown here by the dashed lines. Mapping a mouse brain, which has 1,000 times more neurons than a fly brain, will drive us uh, to scale our technologies even further and teach us important things about how larger mammalian brains like our own work. The specific part of the mouse brain that we're studying, called the hippocampal formation, will help us answer questions like how does spatial memory work, 
How do we know where we are? How does the brain record places and relate them to other memories? The mouse brain connectome could be the largest data set in biology ever collected. This animation compares the data storage of a single Google Pixel phone, 512 gigabytes, to the amount of data required for various connectomics projects. And beyond just acquiring and storing the data, accurately processing it to make it useful for biologists is a huge challenge. But that's been our unique contribution to the field, developing computational tools that push the state of the art in accuracy and then really applying them at scale to larger and larger data sets. So what do these tools actually look like? One of the primary innovations we've contributed is an approach to automated neuron tracing based on an autoregressive 3D convolutional network called flood filling networks. We first introduced this in a Nature Methods paper in 2018, and since then, we've continued to refine this technique with new architectural enhancements and shown that it can result in a 1,000-fold reduction in the amount of human effort required to analyze the data. More recent innovation has been a self-supervised learning technique for connectomics that learns representations of the data uh, that can be used to identify different parts of neurons and what particular type a neuron is based purely on the patterns in the data itself, with only minimal human labeling required. This technique is called segmentation-guided contrastive learning of representation and is currently impressed at Nature Methods. The method of machine learning employed here is in some ways similar to what is used to train large language models, but more specialized for the type of data that we see in connectomics. Finally, we're also working with our collaborators to bring together multiple modalities of data. Combining, for instance, for instance connectomes with real-time recordings of the neuronal firing in a larval zebrafish as they respond to their environment. This highly challenging research will enable us to understand how the connectivity of the brain drives its function and behavior, and ask ambitious questions like whether a machine learning program could help predict the activity of a neuron or neural circuit. In the course of our research, we've also advanced technologies that have applications far beyond neuroscience. For example, to help manage huge data sets, we created TensorStore, open source software for working with petabyte scale, multi-dimensional data sets from thousands of computers at the same time. TensorStore is now used to help train nearly all of the large language models developed at Google and is helping researchers around the world solve problems in their own domains. So in conclusion, thanks for letting me share my research with you and to leave you with one thought. Uh, AI is not just about helping make computers smarter, but also making serious contributions to scientific questions like you know, who we are and what we are. Thanks.